Okay, welcome to the school gardens that we've been doing with 4-H as well as the local schools here. I worked with Baker School for the third and fourth graders. Third graders got to put in quite a few things, but nothing got started this year. So everybody is going to be working on this garden that we looked at last week. So let's see what's going on here. Look at the growth that we've gotten on these tomatoes. They're putting on six to eight inches a day at the way they've been growing. And so it's important, you see, we put the cages on here. It's important to continue to redirect all of these branches into the cage itself so they'll continue to grow upward and getting enough sunlight to everybody. Now be careful. You got to do it when they're young so that they'll still bend without breaking because if you break it, you've lost that branch. So we need to keep doing this each day. Keep checking and moving these branches within the cage itself because that's what it's going to need for the support. It'll bend pretty easily, but if you bend too hard, you've lost the top of that and keep threading it up. Now, do you notice something different growing in here? These are our cucumbers. We are growing these as a companion plant with the tomatoes so that the cage will not only support the tomato, but is also providing something for the cucumber to anchor to. Something that's unique about these climbing vines is that they grow tendrils. This little spring-like structure reaches out and grabs a hold of something and wraps around it so it can keep climbing up higher and higher. So we will see these cucumbers come all the way up to the top of the cage and hopefully have the opportunity to flower and we'll have the cucumbers hanging over the side also. So keep an eye for these guys as they're continuing to grow. Notice our tomatoes. We've still got really good flowers coming out on those, but now we've gone to a few cool nights. And so the tomatoes are not setting a whole lot because we've got a lot of wind and not a lot of insects coming into this area. But we'll keep an eye on them because hopefully we'll see some tomatoes get set on those. Let's look at our squash while we're here. Look at how big those have got this week lots and lots of brand new leaves well if you notice these look like a bunch of little baby squashes getting formed and that's how you know that you have got a female plant is because that little squash fruit looks like what it's going to mature to however inside of each of those flowers we don't know if it's been pollinated or not it's very important in that flower that in this tube that the pollen has gone into that tube, right in through there. So we need to make sure we've got both male and females open at the same time. Let's look at this one over here. This one's still open today. Look who's visiting. We've got ants crawling in there because remember, this pollen is also sweet. And so the ants will feed on those. So that can sometimes be a problem too for our pollinating insects that show up if they're having to compete with the ants. But there's our female flower. And right behind it though, we might have some of these male flowers. See how there's no little fruit on the end of that? It doesn't look like this. It's not swelling out. That's pretty good odds that that will be a male flower. Where the one above it, see how it swelled out on this end? That's going to be a female flower. We need one of each of those to be open at the same time so that the insects can move between and move that pollen in. And you know what? If you don't see the bee traffic, you can do it with a paintbrush. Just take one of these watercolor paint brushes and go between the boy flower and the girl flower and move that pollen. So you too can be the pollinator. 
but we got to start looking and right now we got a lot of girl flowers and not a lot of boy flowers so we'll watch these little fruit but they probably are going to dry up and fall off because they haven't been pollinated the warmer we get the more of those male flowers will have show up look what's on this edge isn't this beautiful these are our lettuces and this is about the end of the season for the lettuce so we've been harvesting some and you can take the few leaves like we did last week or you can cut off an entire head and you can take that and have it for several days so Harvest them as you need to, and look at all the salads we could get out of just this one head of lettuce. And yet it's still growing there. It still has a couple of other heads. So we'll keep continue to do this until we get completely past all the cool weather, and then we'll have to pull these, the whatever's left out. But these have been doing fantastic with these little bit cooler nights. Well, we got one more thing to look at today. Anybody remember what it is? It's the potatoes. So let's move over here to the potatoes. Any of you that are joining from the third grade classes in Baker, Miss Meredith, Miss Saunders, Miss Tiptons, and Mr. Butler's class, your potatoes are here at the school and they're still growing and they still have their names on them. So we're going to keep watching these and see who's getting the most growth. Well, what do you think? Hmm. This one right here is pretty big. And this is from the Potato Gang. So if you guys were on the Potato Gang team, you're winning right now. They're getting the tallest. But we'll keep watching them. Homeschoolers? These are yours over here. What do you think's been happening to this one right here? Look at this. I haven't had any of you guys here to help take care of these. So look at this. We've got holes in the leaves. Remember we showed you where we had the eggs on it last time? Well, look who's starting to hatch out here. Do you see them? There's our little caterpillars, and they have been chewing on the leaves. So each day I've been picking off these few caterpillars to try to keep them from continuing to eat the leaves of our plants. If these guys continue to grow and get big, they'll eventually metamorphosize. You guys remember that word, right? because they will turn into the adult that looks nothing like the larva. This adult is either going to be a moth or a caterpillar, and we're pretty sure it's going to be a moth. And so we are probably going to have to keep these removed off the plants because they're doing way too much damage to these potatoes. Those plants need all those leaves in order to make enough food. So I wish you all were here to help pick some of these caterpillars off, but we're gonna keep an eye on them and we're gonna keep them growing so that we'll be able to harvest these potatoes. We got a few more months to go, but it won't be too long and we'll have some potatoes that we can look at in the ground if we can keep these insects off of them. I hope you've enjoyed looking at your garden and seeing how big it's getting because each week it's getting bigger and bigger and we're going to find out before too long who grew the most potatoes. And we'll see how many squash and tomatoes we actually can get. And don't forget about the cucumbers. You guys that have learned about your vines, that new word today was tendrils. That's how they hang on. All right, keep checking back with us. We'll keep you updated on your vegetable garden. Hopefully we'll have fewer caterpillars in the future. Thanks for joining us with 4-H today. And you guys in the Baker School, I hope you enjoy seeing your potatoes over here growing some more. Competition is still on. Thanks.